you know, my father and my uncle together were <clears throat> in World War II together, and their, their big place they went to was the Hurtgen Forest in the 7th Infantry Division. And they wound up, once they went overseas, they came late to World War II. Um, they wound up in the Hurtgen Forest in the September of 44. And his stories, uh, he pulled all this stuff together through the years, and he came out and published his book called My Visit to Hell by Joseph Grimaldi at the time. And uh, my father, who was his best buddy, how my uncle and my father were together was, because um, I wasn't born until 49, uh, my uncle Joe's had four sisters. And my father saw a photo of one of his sisters and asked if he could start writing her. And of course, he did. And at the end of the war, a year later, um, my, my dad married my mom, who was my uncle Joe's sister. That's how that happened. But it's fortunate in that way because in 1955, my father died of a brain tumor. But all these years, it's been my uncle who's been the voice of my father. My uncle would call me all hours of the night and the day where he was, let me tell you another story about your father and I. My dad spoke German. He was able to use the company and interpreter when they kind of broke into Germany. But my uncle and my dad were both communications guys. They originally were in the Army Air Corps and they were on B-17s, and they were the combo guys. You had one combo, combo guy in each aircraft, <coughs> radio guy. And so, in uh, uh, late 43, the Army raked through all these Army Air Corps units to form more infantry divisions, and that's how the 7 days infantry was formed. Well, so they became combo guys in their infantry unit, the 311th Infantry Regiment. My, the biggest story my uncle tells is the one time that him and my dad and his combo guys of four jeeps or five jeeps came under a Stuka dive bomber attack. And it was, it was like the 8th or 9th of March when the Ramagan Bridge was found standing, the only bridge over the Rhine. When it was found standing, there was elements of 9th Armored that were found standing. And the word went out all through the Western Front, whatever units are nearby, head for the town of Vermont and go across the Ludendorff Bridge, because it's still standing. So uh, my uncle's story is that at 3 in the morning, they were kicked out of their sleeping bags and stuff, and get on the road and head east, get to this town called Vermont. So their little section of four or five jeeps and a couple of trailers headed right for Vermont. And my uncle's story is just as it was starting to get light, they were entering the edge of the town. There were MPs there already, waving, come on, come on, keep going. And, and two different turns in, in the town, and then they saw the big bridge standing in front of them. And there was an MP behind them, above them, being shot at by the Germans from the hill of the mountain on the other side. And he was waving, go, go, go. And they went around this giant crater with their jeeps. And they just got, began to get out of the bridge. They were halfway across, and they heard aircraft engines. And they looked up. And there was three Stukas coming down, one coming down the Rhine, the other two coming out of the sky. Because <laughs> the Germans realized the mistake. They had to take that bridge down. And, and then my uncle and my dad had never been on the dive bombing attack before. But this Stuka by then was considered an obsolete plane, but the Germans were still using it. And he said, they, the second Jeep trailer got stuck in the railroad bridge ties, because it was a railroad bridge. And, and meanwhile, the, the Germans were shooting with rifles across the river uh, from the mountain above, because um, he said that, my uncle said that we jumped out of the jeeps and we, we kept pushing and it wouldn't come, the tires were stuck in the rear tires, so we said what we did was we, we took the trailer and we just took the trailer and threw it into the ride. <laughs> all their sleeping gear and all the personal stuff was in that trailer. <laughs> he said that there were bullets, the holes being, uh, in the, being created or appearing in the roof and the hoods of the jeeps and stuff. He said, we just had to get going. Just as well, we got on the other side, the first bomb started to drop on the bridge all around us. And then we went to dirt. He said, we went underground. He said, we were, we were so shook up because we thought we were dead. But that's one of my stories that my uncle tells about that, that morning, right after the bridge was found standing. You know, he a very smart guy, knowledgeable guy. He, he uh, 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 by the way, he's after the Army because he finished college. He went and worked for Esso Oil Company, and he had a career with them. 
If you talk to him now, if he was here, he wouldn't, wouldn't give a darn about Essel Oil Company. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's what happened in the Hurricane Forest you know, from, or from September all the way to January and into February before they finally got through that place and broke through all the concrete pillboxes and bunkers and everything else that they had to take on during that time and taking part of the brunt of the German attack at the Bulge, the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, he's the nicest guy, but my uncle or my dad would be the same if he was still with us and I learned a lot from him. My uncle, my uncle could never, up there, he's in Maine now, on the coast, just south of uh, Bar Harbor. He just don't, still don't understand how I can have an MG42. You know, under the NFA laws in 1934, he was way to get it legally and have it all proper. He just still can't understand how anybody can handle one of those. But they're out there. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. <laughs> I keep telling him, come on, Uncle Joe, come on down here. And you can shoot it on the on Mount Creek Range if you want. You know? <laughs> but that's uh, his book, um, My Visit to Hell. It's, uh, I, I don't know if it's available very far and wide. You know, but he's, all his photographs and everything are in it. And he's considering doing volume two. But that's all.